Okay, um, in this video I want to talk about finding the domain of a vector function, and these are really, uh, I think, fairly straightforward problems, um, so we'll see see how it goes. Um, so here my vector equation, um, r of t, it's going to be t minus 2 over t plus 2i plus sine tj plus the natural logarithm of 9 minus t squared k. Equivalently, we could write it in this alternate um, notation, alternative notation. The idea in these problems is basically you just have to look at each piece individually, find the domain of each piece individually um, of all the components, and you're basically just looking for values of t that will satisfy um, all of those simultaneously. Okay, so for the first part, um, t minus 2 over t plus 2. The only thing, the only restrictions on the domain for this part would be you could not have that t equals negative 2. We can't use that value of t because if we do that, that will make the the uh, denominator equals zero, so that would be bad. Okay, so now, um, so so far that's my only restriction on the t value is that t can't equal negative two. Well, the next thing I would have to think about is sine of t. But if you think about sine of t, um, sine is defined for any value. So to make sine of t happy, there are no restrictions on t. Okay, so, so far, the only restriction we have, again, is that t cannot equal negative 2. Well, now I have to look at the natural logarithm of 9 minus t squared. Remember, for a natural logarithm, um, the stuff on the inside of the logarithm um, has to be something strictly greater than 0. So what that means is that I'm going to have to solve the inequality 9 minus t squared greater than 0. And remember for inequalities, basically the idea is you find what value makes the inequality. Basically, um, I pretend it, it was just an equation. I find solutions to the corresponding equation, and then I use a number line. So we don't really need the function anymore, so let me um, erase that. So for 9 minus t squared, so if you've forgotten quadratic inequalities, hey, I've got a, a bunch of videos on those as well. So I'm going to so solve the corresponding equation, 9 minus t squared. Well, that simply factors as 3 minus t, 3 plus t equals 0. So the solutions to this will be t equals positive and negative 3. So when I look at my uh, quadratic inequality, 9 minus t squared, what I do is I put the numbers negative 3 and positive 3 on my number line. Um, and again, if you notice if you put either negative 3 or positive 3, we're trying to satisfy this inequality. Neither one of those values will work because they'll both give us 0 out. So I'm going to put a little open circle there. And again, for inequalities, basically what you have to do is you have to test a point from each interval. You can check if you take a number less than negative 3 and plug it in your inequality. Um, you will not get a number greater than 0, so that stuff doesn't work. Notice if we take um, a number between negative 3 and positive 3, that will satisfy my inequality, so I'm going to shade that stuff in to indicate that it works. So I'm being a little, uh, a little quicker on these things. I assume if you're you know, seeing vector um, functions, you, you probably are OK with domain. Um, and also, if you take a, a value larger than 3, notice if I plug that into my inequality, um, I'm going to get something that is not greater than 0. So to make the last um, part happy, I would have to use values, I would have to use values of t between negative 3 and positive 3, strictly. So let's look at all of our restrictions. It says to make... Um, to make the last part work, to get a, uh, um, something that will not be undefined for the natural logarithm, it says we have to use stuff between negative 3 and positive 3. 
For the sign part, it said there's no restrictions on t, but for the first part, remember, we can't use t equals negative 2. Okay, so again, negative 2 doesn't mess up the natural logarithm, but it will mess up the first part. So everything else left over is going to be the domain of this vector function. Okay, so in interval notation, to me, I would say our domain is the set of t, or I guess that's not interval, um, not uh, interval notation, this is set notation now, excuse me. So it says our domain is going to be the set of t values. Um, actually, let's don't use interval notation. Let's use, or excuse me, let's use interval notation. It says our domain is going to be those t values between negative 3 and negative 2. We've got to skip over negative 2 and then up to positive 3. So there is the domain of our lovely vector function. So, so again, all you're basically trying to do is you're finding the domain of each individual piece and trying to find um, those values of t that will satisfy each, each component of your vector. So, all right, I hope this makes some sense. If you have some questions, feel free to post uh, comments or questions. Hopefully me or someone else can, uh, can help you out out there. Good luck.